Welcome back. And in this video, we're going to talk nothing but about chamfers and some of the typical ones you're going to see on any kind of drawing or document that you may be working on. This is probably the most common way that you're going to see on your drawing a chamfer bend dimension. It's going to give you a distance followed by the angle. And what this is is just a shorthand notation for how the next example look. And if we pan over, we're going to see that these two are exactly the same. They mean the exact same thing. This takes up a little bit more space. And this one is really shorthand notation. What this means is that from this face to the back of the end point here is a distance of 1.25. And it's the exact same thing from this face going down to this point is 1.25, just like it's dimensioned here. Another common thing that you're going to see in drafting is that anytime you have a 45 degree angle, usually the length and the width that's going to dimension both of those should be the same. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the next example. Another way you may see that it is dimension is you're going to have a 45 degree angle and you're going to have a distance. Now, this is probably a least common way, but you can imagine if there's some things going on, on above this image that you can do this to save you some space. But if you go ahead and type it in and it looks like this, it means that once again, the exact same thing as the first two examples. Just because of that simple rule that if it's a 45 degree angle, that the distance should be the same. And the last way that you're gonna see in is just kind of the opposite of the one that you have here. Let me zoom back in. It's gonna be this example. So. The first four that I showed you right now, they all mean exactly the same. One great benefit about those is that you can use the chamfer command in AutoCAD to go ahead and, and create those. Okay, I'm going to come down here to the bottom and I'm going to use these two example lines that I have just to show you how the chamfer command works. So if I go to chamfer, you can see by my command line I get two options. I can either use a distance or I can use the angle approach. Let's go ahead and use the distance one first. So I'll select distance and it's asking me to specify that distance from that first edge back to where that point should be. So I'll go ahead and type in 1.25 as my distance. Enter. Now it's going to ask me for that second distance. So the one that it's looking at is kind of reminding you of it's kind of creating this. So if I go ahead and type in 1.25, or if you see that in the brackets, you have the 1.25 already there, which means that AutoCAD is going to accept that if you just hit the enter button. So I'll go ahead and accept that one. Now it's asking me to specify the first line. Since these are the same, it doesn't matter which order you select these in. So I could select both of those lines and you can see that that chamfer is created. The next way it's going to do is we're going to take a look at the angle approach. So we're going to go back to the chamfer command. I'll select angle. And the first thing it's going to do is say, hey, give me a length from that line. So once again, depend on which line that you're going to select first. I want the distance from this line going back to that end point. So I'll type in 1.25. And once again, you see in the brackets that it already has the 1.25. So I could have hit the enter button to bypass. And now it's going to ask me, give me that angle that you want to create this at. So if I type in 45 and hit the enter button, you're going to see that it's ready now for me to set up. And the first line that I picked is going to be the one that is going to set the distance to and the angle. So once I select this line and then I select this line, you're going to see that it will create the exact same thing. Let's go ahead and put the dimensions on it really quick just so I can show you that it did create the two images or sorry, the four images at the top that I created. And you can see that it did that one on that. And if I want to go ahead and put the angle on it, it's going to give me the exact same approach. Okay, if I go back and I take a look at this example, you're going to see things are a little bit differently. You see that I have a line that's going from this edge. So I'm, I'm defining how long I want that edge to be and I give it the angle. 
So once I have a problem like this, I can no longer use the chamfer command. I have to use some other way of creating that, and I'll show you one way that I would probably approach that just by using the polar method. And if you're not familiar with that, that's the one that deals with a distance and an angle. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with a line. And then I'll start a, pick a start point, and I want to go vertical, so I'll click here. And now I want to have that angle go in that direction. So I'm going to have to type in some kind of syntax to get AutoCAD to remember which way I want to go. So I'll first type in the at symbol. I do know the distance that I want to create, which is 1.25. The next thing I need to do is use an angle symbol, which is the less than symbol. And then I have to give it what angle it needs to be. Well, since I'm going up and to the left, that angle is 135. Once you hit the enter button, you're going to see that it will create that line using that syntax. And then I can carry on as, as I would normally do or create the rest of my image. If I go ahead and put dimensions on this one, you're going to see that the dimensions on this is going to be a little bit differently. So just because I dimension that, you can see the length and the width. They are the same, but they're not the 1.25 that I wanted. But the aligned dimension is the one that I'm after, so the dimension of that surface is correct. So that's one of those things you want to really be careful about anytime you see chamfers. Make sure that you're looking at the dimensions and doing exactly what it's telling you. So this one is saying make that, that surface that distance. The other ones are saying from this face to that end should be that distance. So it's giving you the horizontal and vertical distance. Okay, the last examples I have for you, let's take a look at some things that have some angles in them. So, once again, these are the exact same approaches as the ones before, but they have a different angle, which means that the 1.25 will not be the same in both directions when it goes to this top one. And on the bottom one, it means exactly the same, kind of what we just did in that example. It says, give me a distance on that face. Uh, one other approach that you could have took to do this one is, and a lot quicker one, if you're not good with remembering syntax, is if you use the polar tracking, which is this icon here, and I'll go ahead and turn it on, and if you go ahead and select the one that says 30, 60, I'm sorry, we're on the 45. If you select the one that says 45, 90, and 135, and now when I create my line, it works exactly the same, but a lot quicker. It saves you from having to remember the syntax, so I'll go in this direction. And I know I want to go this direction, so I can just type in the length of that line, and then I can carry on this way. So this approach is totally fine to creating the distance of that surface. So once again, remember that I cannot use the chamfer command. Okay, so let's go ahead and take approach with these ones that have the 30 degrees. I'm just going to draw a line here, and I'm going to create kind of a straight edge. And then I will show you how the chamfer command works on this one. So in this first approach, I can use the chamfer command. I can go to chamfer. I'll select the angle approach, because that's the only one I have. I don't have the distance of my other line, or the, hard, the vertical distance. So I'll select angle. It's going to ask me, give me that distance, which is still that distance from that face going back. So I can type in 1.25, which is fine. And now I have to give it the angle. In this case, I'm going to give it 30 degrees. So once you type in 30, now you have to tell it which line that you want to affect. So in, in general, it's asking me, I want to change this line. I want to move this endpoint back 1.25. And then from that point, draw me a line going down 30. To connect to that line. So once I select that line and then I select this one, it will give me that angle. On this bottom approach, I have to use kind of some things that I did before. So we can go through the syntax like we did, or you can always use the polar tracking method, which is a lot simpler and it will save you from the hassle or the headache of trying to remember what angle is where. So if I select this method and I went and selected the 30, 60, 90. I'll start the line command. 
start a line from here I'll go up whatever distance and now this is where I want to go ahead and, and, and rotate it up so I, I'm going straight horizontal from this direction if I come up and it's gonna click one time that's gonna be the 30 degrees that I need then I'll go ahead and type in the length which is 1.25 enter and then I'll go this way and carry on out my dimension okay so once again I want to caution you and make sure that you're reading the dimensions correctly make sure that you're knowing what dimensions that you need and how you're going to go about applying that and I hope this was helpful for you and I will definitely see you in the next video thank you for watching